Hey guys, Danny from Your Guitar Academy and welcome back to our Funk Essentials Level 1. And we're really rolling through this final unit now and it's at the point where we need to add the chorus section. So this is where we come away from that very high-end three-string chord inversions to now grabbing bigger sounding chords, making a bigger sounding, think of this as like a pop chorus. This is pop funk and the best kind of pop funk you can hear. <laughs> so we're going to be putting that all together in this lessons. So pick up your guitar and let's get started. Hey guys, if you've just joined us here on YouTube for this Funk Essentials quest, then please do go ahead and check out the website. It's all absolutely free. You get the full write-up, you get the tab, the chord diagrams, the scale diagrams, everything you need to get the most out of this course. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to us here on YouTube and leave us a comment. We make sure that we get back to every single one of you. Okay then guys, so let's just start by listening to the chorus part. Okay, it goes like this. Two, three, four. Oh, I'll do that again. Two, three, four. <laughs> so let's go through this. So you can hear this is a very big sounding. It's 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 uh, almost anthemic. It's got a big lift to it. Okay. So there's a couple of things. First of all, let's just break down the chords. And we're actually using very similar chord shapes. So we're just bringing in more major triads now. So we're going to start on this G minor seven, and we're going to roll through the classic kind of melodic extensions to that. We're going to do the G minor seven, then the G minor seven with the high flat seven, and then the G thirteen. So we're sticking to a similar theme that we had in the verse, but now we're playing the full extent of the chord, okay? Okay, we'll get to the rhythm in a second. Let's just get these chords nailed in. And then we're gonna do an F major. And this is based very much on that A shape F major, but we're just doing a triad of it, so it's fifth, root major third, so just that first finger there, okay? So that's just 10th fret. Remember, you can find all these chord diagrams over on the website. But we're just playing that there, as well as the tab, of course, absolutely free. Uh, and then we're gonna do a B flat. Okay, and, and the B flat, I mean, basically it's a C shape. B flat major chord, okay? But this is a classic, it's like a Rolling Stones trick. Okay, and all, all this is is just going from the F major, and then you can just keep your barred F major there and add in these two notes. So add in the 12th fret on the D string and the 11th fret on the B string. And in, in the realms of a B flat, you know, adding it there, that gives us the major third, fifth, and root. Okay, so we get the nice movement from there to there, and then down to a C major. That gives us a real clear indication where this, you know, chord progression lies. We've got an F, we've got a B flat, and we've got a C. So F, B flat, and C. So in more and more, we're starting to get this indication that, okay, this, this is basically F major. This chord chart is F major, but it seems to be rooted around the, the G, which makes it kind of like a G Dorian style track, okay? So that's a whole thing for another day. By the way, we are currently working on a mode series, depending on when you watch this, that may or may, may not be out by now, but we will be covering the Dorian in great depth. So this will make a bit more sense when we do that. So, so in terms of basic chords here, we've got the G minor, seven, then we've got the seventh at the top, G minor 13, F, B flat, C. So just in terms of a rough timing, I would just get used to this. But we'll sort the rhythm out in a minute. They're the chords that we need. Remember, head on over to the website if you're not sure how to fret those chords. They're all over there as well as the tab. Now then, let's get into the groove of this. So let's just start with that G minor 7 bit. We go like this. 
okay? So, as I said, way back, or way back, one unit ago, it feels way back for me, when we were doing, I'm sure it does for you too, when we were doing this chord, this G minor shape chord, this A shape, we talked about that, that hammer on thing, and we're gonna be doing it right now. So we're gonna be literally going and hammering on the 12th and the 11th fret. Okay, in terms of our rhythm, that's one E and. One E and. One E and. One E and. So there's nothing else apart from that first hit with my right hand. Okay. And then I'm gonna actually hit the chord a couple more times. So one E and uh, two. One E and a uh, two. One E and a uh, two. <laughs> One E and a uh, two. Okay, so that's where we are so far. And then on the E and, on the two E and, we're gonna go and hit two dead notes like this. One E and a uh, two E and. One E and a uh, two E and. One E and a uh, two E. So we're getting into really finer details at this point in the course with regards to our 16th note strum. We've come a long way since that unit one, but the time you put in there will make this possible, okay? So, okay. Now at that point, we're gonna do that movement. So that flat seven to the major six, okay? And we do that in upstroke. So it goes like this. One E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh, and then break, and then break again. Okay, so it's a uh, three E. <laughs> so let me do it again. One E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E. Okay. Once you start to get it a little bit faster, it starts to really make sense. Okay. Now, there's one final bit of the bar to do, and we're just gonna play this chord again, essentially, but amongst lots of chucka chuckas. So we get this. Okay, so we just simply get, on the last couple of bits, so it'll be, uh, uh, f uh sorry. A uh, four E and a, uh. a uh, uh, four E and a. Uh. If I put it into context, it's going to make a lot more sense. Let's let's kind of get the whole bit together. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the drums here to really solidify this part. I'm going to go down to fifty BPM. This is probably the hardest strumming part we've had to do so far. Well, it definitely is. So. Lots of intricacies going on here, so let's really drill down on it. So how do we feel about that? Um, it's, it's, there's a lot going on there. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna sit and kind of loop that. I'll try and count it through with you guys. Um, and then I think you just need to really just pause the video, just focus in on this entirely until we're starting to get it just a little bit quick, a little bit more natural. Okay, so. For a second so that is um that is how we would go through that and that is by far 
I would say, the hardest rhythm pattern so far. We got a combination of some pretty intricate little movements with the G minor seventh chord, plus we're also thinking about where those chaka chakas are and where the gaps are. Now, best advice here, whenever you're getting to a more complicated groove like that, is don't obsess over getting the exact right ghost notes. So the ghost notes are the, okay, don't obsess over that, okay? That, what we wanna get is the main hits. That, that's the main part, okay? And then we can bring in or bring out more and more of the ghost notes to taste, let's say. It's, it's kind of like how much salt or pepper do you like in your food, right? It's, it's to taste. They always say that in recipe books, right? To taste. So here, you might like the sound of a, like as if John Frusciante was playing this part. It might sound like this. You know, but if someone like, I don't know, let's say a more subtle, like a Nile Rodgers player was playing, it might sound a bit more like this where we only hear some chaka chakas, some ghost notes, or we might want all the ghost notes, so no ghost notes. All depends on what the track needs. The point is that you can do any or all of that because you know how to move your right hand consistently, exactly as we've spoken about, right? That's the magic of it. That's the magic of what we're doing here. So by learning it correctly, you can be any or all of those as, as you choose. And you can bring it in and out. So it might be that in the first couple of uh, bars you go. And then you just make it, you know, just as we're gonna go into a bigger section or something like that, you can choose to bring in more of those ghost notes. So that's just a quick side, sideways uh, thing, just so that you know to not obsess over the ghost notes. You know, make sure you get the basic core of the sound right Make sure the right hand's moving and then you can kind of, as you get more comfortable with it, you can bring in and out the, the ghost notes. Then we've got the F, C, and this is more like a riff. So we're going two, three, four. Okay, so it's very much a specific part. This is where we do need exactly the right thing. So we're gonna do the F on the one, okay? Then on the one and, we're gonna do a downstroke hit and on the one E and a, uh, we're gonna hit that B flat. One E and a, uh, two, three, four. One E and a, uh, two, three, four. One E and a, uh, okay. Then another break, okay. And then we're gonna push in on the two E and the C, okay. One E and a, uh, two E and, two, three, four. One E and a, uh, two E and. And again, one E and a, uh, two E and, a uh, three and, a four E and, a uh, one E and a, uh, two E and, a uh, three and, a uh, four E and. Uh. So let's do that with the drum beat. We can really hear that one clearly. That's a lot easier, isn't it, that one? Um, just gotta get your head around the, um, the actual kind of little triad chords that we're playing there. It's three E and a four E and a. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. myself at the end there. So we're gonna keep that drum going and we're gonna do the two bars together. Here we go. And a 40 and a. up a little bit. Let's jump up to 65.
one more time. And. And there we have it. So there's our part, guys, and that goes around four times for the chorus. So now we have the intro, we have the verse, and we have the chorus, all of the different parts. Make sure at this point you're still practicing them all individually. Because next time I'm gonna, whilst you're still practicing those, we're gonna take a quick side quest and learn the really cool bubble picking rhythm slash lead part that goes through the whole verse. All right, that's it for me for this lesson, guys. If you want to head over to the next lesson, all you have to do is click here somewhere. And if you want to start from the beginning of the course, the full playlist is here. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave us a comment. We love hearing from you guys. We love hearing how you're getting on and we'll do our best to get back to every single comment or question that you guys have.